So I decided to go to England and the standard way of getting there was by sea as a ship surgeon. And of that, there were 30 odd Australians living in the College of Surgeons doing the course that led to the primary examination for the FRCS, most of whom had gone to England as ship surgeons and all had some incredible stories to tell of their experiences. The only uh, illness I saw was one crewman with pneumonia, I was on a British India ship, and uh, several with loose teeth from betel nut chewing, which I used to pull out at nine o'clock every morning was betel nut round, till I got a guy with a massive mole of it, I got half out and it wouldn't come out any further. And he was in much pain. So I uh, found a pethidine tablet and stuck it up the gap between the tooth and the gum, pushed the tooth back and told him to bite hard and keep it like that till the pain stopped. And when we got to Aden, we sent him to a dentist to have it removed properly and I took him to the dentist and on the dentist's front door it had his qualifications, FDS uh, in brackets failed. <laughs> it, nevertheless he did a good job and the crewman rejoined the ship. Anyway, on arrival, I went to see Sir Stephen Miller, who was surgeon oculist to the Queen. I had a letter of introduction to him from Morris Ewing, our pro the first professor of surgery in Melbourne. And I had a bunch of references all to hand, and Sir Stephen said, waste of time. He said, I wouldn't even bother to read them. He said, Australian ref referees are so biased and so dishonest. He said, you'd think every Australian that ever came to England was a genius. He said, you've got the first thing you've got to do if you want a proper training here is go and get a job in a provincial hospital and get English references. Well, that meant a few weeks of hunting around finding a hospital. I finished up at the Sussex Eye Hospital. And from there, I uh, moved up to Moorfields where I hoped to train. Uh, I had a letter also to Sir Stuart Duke Elder and when I went to see him, uh, we were clutching my letter, again from Morris Ewing, uh, he said, what's your full name? And I said, uh, James Ewan Kirkwood Galbraith, sir. And he smiled and he said, ah, you're one of us. And then there's a long pause, he said, I suppose you'd like a job. And I said, yes, I would. And he said, oh, I've got establishment for another research assistant. Uh, you can have that. So most mornings I spent, or most afternoons I spent in Sir Stuart's laboratory punching cards. And in the morning I'd also uh, got to know Harold Ridley uh, while I was at Brighton because one of his protégés was a consultant at Brighton at the Sussex Eye Hospital. So uh, I went to see him and he did the same thing. What's your full name? And I told him, oh, you're another Scot. He said, yes, we need someone in outpatients. You can have a job there. And at that stage, he was just starting to develop the intraocular lens. And he was making his initial ones by cutting them out of uh, contact lens material, out of con actually contact lenses. Then he persuaded uh, a company to start manufacturing them out of perspex. And uh, they were a disaster and he, poor Harold was uh, really sent to Coventry by most of the senior staff because there was never any animal experimentation. He just popped these lenses into patients and most of them were a disaster. They'd get tremendous uveitis and usually the lens had to be removed but the vision was never much good after that. Uh, but he was an interesting guy. Surgically he was incredibly uh, dexterous and the ward round was always a, a, a laugh because the, nobody ever came on the ward round except his own team and we'd get to a bed and he'd suddenly stop and turn and look up at me because he's quite a small man and he'd say quick tip for private practice dear boy and I said yes sir he said never talk while they're signing the check uh, I thanked him for that, it was a valuable piece of advice. And I remember on another occasion he stopped and he said, pointer for private practice, Galbraith. And I said, yes, sir. He said, had a patient yesterday, can't tell you his name, of course, professional ethics, forbid it. Household name, household name. Member of cabinet, actually. And uh, he said, I did his cataract and he came to see me yesterday with the bill and he threw it on the desk. Actually threw it on the desk. 
I'd said, this, this account is a disgrace. So Ridley picked it up and looked at it and he said, I said, oh, it's that damn new secretary I've got. She's left the naught off. And he reached over and put a knot on the end. I said, did he pay it? And he said, of course he did. <laughs> Quite a character, Harold. <laughs>